Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne. I'm the Sheboygan County Administrative Coordinator and co-host of this program. Chairman Bill Gehring is not with us today. He's attending a meeting in Milwaukee, actually a summit that the governor's put on, so uh, he could not be with us today. But we are pleased, or at least I am pleased, to introduce our guest, Ann Wondergem. Ann is director of the Health and Human Health and Human Services Department, our largest department. Sheboygan County has 23 departments, one of which has over a $36 million budget, and that is the Health and Human Services Department. A lot of wonderful activities going on over the holidays, and certainly that department provides such important services to the people of Sheboygan County. So, Ann, why don't you start off by telling our viewers a little bit about yourself, how long you've worked for the department, and we'll go from there. I'm not sure I want to say how long I work for the department. It might give my age away, but um, I'm happy to be back. I usually get the December show, and um, I really do appreciate that because there is a lot that goes on year-round, but particularly at the holiday season, uh, much more that we do for families um, throughout Sheboygan County. Um, I've been with uh, Sheboygan County since 1978 in one capacity or another, starting at the Comprehensive Health Care Center and since 1980 with uh, Sheboygan County with Health and Human Services. So it's been a long tenure, Adam. Which should make you about 35 or I'm so. I'm 39 for the 10th time. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> well, it's nice to have you with us today. Thank and again, you. a lot to cover. We have a lot of uh, good questions for Ann. And why don't we start with the big picture? What's the primary mission or responsibilities of your department? We always try to do it succinctly, and of course that doesn't tell you a lot, but basically our goal is to improve the quality of life and of course the self-sufficiency of Sheboygan County residents. That doesn't tell you a lot, so what we really do is, how I like to say it, is we take care of people prior to birth all the way through death. And that sounds a little strange, but when you think about it, through our Division on Public Health, we provide prenatal services to women through our WIC program, and when someone dies and needs assistance with burial, through our economic support division, we can assist with that. And we do everything else in between also. So $36 million budget. Uh, how many employees do you have? We have 196 employees, but that's only a small part of that budget. That represents about $10 million worth of expenses. About $22.5 million is actual contracts. We contract for group home services. We contract for home health care. So we contract with vendors throughout the county, and that accounts for about $22.5 million of that $36 million budget. I'll be darned. And five divisions. Five Why divisions. Don't you share with us a little bit what the different divisions are and their responsibilities. Okay. And I think you remember, Adam, up until about two years ago, we had four divisions, and then we split out economic support with the growth in the W-2 program. But I'm going to do them alphabetically because that probably is more politically correct in terms of handling it. And we'll start with the division on aging. Of course, that's elderly, and elderly for programs will vary anywhere from 60 years of age on up. Primarily, though, that division concentrates on the senior dining sites, previously known as our meal sites out in the county. And, of course, we currently have 10, and starting in January, we'll be down to nine meal sites. They also operate the homespun post, which is very, very busy at this time of the year in terms of sales, and it also provides some additional income for our senior citizens that are able to sell their goods there. Our transportation program is a major program, and that's the handicare program, and we do that in cooperation between the city and the county. Um, and our numbers are increasing there. Um, they do other smaller types of services, but those are the main programs um, in that particular division. For the Division of Aging. It, and if right. anyone's looking to get a homemade Christmas present and doesn't have time to make one themselves, they can stop by the homespun. Correct, and it's on North 8th Street, just a little bit north of Yonkers. Excellent. Four others. Four others. Community programs, alphabetically, is next. Their primary responsibility falls in the area of services to people who have mental health issues, primarily those that would be classified as severe and persistent. So it would be individuals who don't have insurance that need help with medication, counseling, that type of thing. We also have mandatory responsibility for OWIs, operating while intoxicated, and we do the assessment and then referral out for services. This division also has the long-term support services and services for people with developmental disabilities. Um, that's about a $10 million budget and serves well over 600 people annually. You could compare it to um, nursing home services in the community. 
Um, community Programs is located in two locations, in our main building at 1011 North A Street, and then also our annex location, which is the former Baxter building, a little bit further south. Very good. Next division, alphabetically, is economic support, which I mentioned earlier. Financial assistance, food stamps, medical assistance, badger care, all the medical assistance programs. Uh, we'll talk a little bit later about energy assistance. And then, of course, W2 or Wisconsin Works. Uh, the economic support unit is located out, or division now, is located out at the Job Center on Wilgus with our partner agencies. Uh, again, a significant growth uh, right now given the economy in the workload and the caseload for the staff out at the Job Center. I mean, there's been some recent remodeling and upgrades out yes. there, is there not? A big expansion. The yeah. child care center within that building was relocated. Uh, there's some additional classroom space and the LTC Foundation office is now located in that new addition and some expanded parking. Um, we're actually very happy the construction is done. It was pretty miserable during that time in terms of actually providing services to people and, and meeting everyone's needs. Great. Um, let's see, I finished C, so next on our list is public health. Um, I've learned probably the most in the department because this was the newest area for me as I took over as director is public health. Um, probably the place where the most money is also coming in at this point in time. Um, numerous services, school health services, WIC, which is women, infant, and children that I referred to earlier, maternal child and health, environmental health, which is our hotel restaurant inspection program, and the expansion this summer to testing the uh, waters both at Terry Andry and the north side bathing beaches. Um, so it's really an area where we see a lot of growth in the communicable or in the uh, environmental health. We also have a focus on communicable disease uh, that would be sexually transmitted disease, tuberculosis, hepatitis. Um, when I look at the numbers that come out in the public health reports, uh, the work that goes on in order to keep the community safe in terms of communicable disease is just tremendous. Um, and then of course we talked a little bit before about your flu shots. And if you haven't gotten one, um, vaccine is decreasing, but we strongly recommend that people do get their flu shot this year, especially if you are immune compromised. It's very, very important. Um, and I don't know if you've heard, but the pertussis, of course, in Fond du Lac County, so we're monitoring that, and pertussis is more commonly known as whooping cough. Mm -hmm. um, we, so far as of today, have no confirmed cases in Sheboygan County, but when you have a neighboring county with a major outbreak, you are always a little bit more cautious in watching what's happening throughout sure. the county. And then last but not least, um, kind of my home base within the department, social services. Um, we really there are seeing an increase once again in our child protective services referrals. Um, we never have a good reason for why we see an increase in that. Um, holiday time, additional stressors, um, teachers are concerned, students are going to be off for a period of time. So at this time of the year we typically do see an increase in those child abuse neglect referrals. Our job there is to do the assessment and if there is actually abuse neglect, provide services to intervene to protect that child and keep that child safe. Um, the other major part there is our juvenile justice and like many communities we do have youth who tend to get into trouble, some more serious than others, and our job legally then is to work with them and their families to ensure that the community is safe and that they get appropriate services to change their lives around. So five divisions and obviously a great breadth of services, how do people access these services in general? Some come voluntary where they can call up and within the phone book under um, the business section actually in Sheboygan County, there are specific numbers for the various types of services. Um, and when I say voluntary, it usually is those people seeking long-term support services or mental health services or um, our aging division and economic support. Unfortunately, we also deal with involuntary clients, um, those individuals who are referred because of abuse neglect who may be referred by the um, law enforcement agencies throughout the county through a juvenile referral and sometimes through the commitment process at the hospital. So we have both our voluntary clients and involuntary clients that we do work with. Now if there's someone watching and uh, is aware of uh, an elderly person that maybe they're concerned with, with um, paying heating bills or um, perhaps meals on wheels and making sure that they're getting um, you know, mm -hmm. good 
get, getting taken care of, who would they check in with at your department to get some follow-up? Okay, I would recommend two places and I'm going to give a general number which will then direct them to the two different places and that's 459-6400 which is our main number and our main directory. I would recommend definitely the Division on Aging because Pat Haferman is our benefits specialist and she would take a look at the resources the family may have access to in terms of homestead and, and different things that they might want to look at, really helping them sort through that. Secondly, um, we are in the energy assistance season and it's called WEEP now, Wisconsin Home Energy Assistance Program and those benefits are being issued to low income people and many of our senior citizens do fall in that category and that would be accessed through the Job Center and Economic Support. Now, I know your department recently received some nice recognition and wasn't it, wasn't it Pat, if I recall correctly, who was the Benef number one benefit specialist in the state? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I believe it was this summer, um, I was trying to remember back too, because there's so many things that go on in the department. Sure. And as Pat said, it's always nice when the peers recognize you. Um, and she was very, very surprised. And Pat does a real nice job in terms of um, not only advocating on behalf of the elderly, um, but really seeking out resources. Um, most recently, one of the projects she's working on is identifying attorneys throughout the community that might be willing to provide some small degree of free legal assistance to seniors to really help them through some tough spots. Mm, great, great. Well, it reflects well on everyone. And I know you don't have time to mention everyone by name, and I know how strongly you feel and the pride you share in the staff and the work they do, but why don't you mention just your, who your division managers are, because okay. obviously they work so closely with you. Now you didn't put this question on, so you're going to test if I can do this. <laughs> I know you can do it. <laughs> Jim McCabe or James McCabe is the aging division manager, and Jim has been with the county um, much longer than I have and has a real good grasp on what happens in those aging programs. Joan Ketterman is the division manager for community programs and she started out in that division as a, a line worker and moved her way up to supervisor and to division manager. In public health we have Dale Hippenstiel and Dale will be starting his fourth year in March with the county and comes to us from Michigan with a great deal of experience in public health. Uh, Liz Malek is our division manager in economic support again started out as an economic support specialist back in the income maintenance days and was a supervisor and now division manager and Marty Bonk who started out as a social worker and supervisor and now is division manager in social services and I can't forget Amy Heyman our clerical supervisor and Joel Bastian our accounting manager um, are part of the management team. Very good. Very good, thank you. Can about I interrupt you one? Sure. Minute? One of the things that I've often thought about and maybe we can think about in the future is it would be nice to maybe bring in a public health nurse and a social worker because the department is more than Ann Wondergem, director sitting sure. here. It truly is the line staff that are out in the community providing the services. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd certainly be up for that. We'd Great. have to talk to Chairman Gehring, but I'm sure that'd be fine. Um, approximately how many people does your department serve annually? I wish we had one database so I could say for sure it's this number. Um, my best guess is about 30,000 people. And when we've talked about this in the past, one of the things I've done, and I have to look at my notes because I want to make sure I do this accurately, I took a look at about six different information systems and then made some accommodations for duplication. Because somebody could be receiving services from patent aging and one of the social workers in long-term support. But if I look just at our food stamp recipients through this point in time, we had 3,000. If I look at my aging information and referral statistics, we had over 5,000 individuals at this point in time. Now would that be 5,000 individual, 5, not contacts, but 5,000 individuals? Right. The and contacts County is a higher. population of 112,000 people. Correct. So that, that's pretty significant. significant. Mm -hmm. And I gave you food stamps because if I included food stamps and then said medical assistance, there'd be some duplication. So some of the people receiving food stamps will also get medical assistance. We had public health nursing visits in home of 963 so far. Um, clinic visits to our, our public health clinics of 5,738. And then we did 8,580 individual vision screenings out in the schools of children. And then as I talked about earlier, we had 685 people to date either with a developmental disability or some type of disability or because of being elderly that are receiving community-based services in their home 
um, that could be in need of nursing home care. And in fact, out of some of those, uh, about 68 were in institutions and placed back in the community. Hmm. Wow. So it's 30,000 is significant and it could be a low estimate. It certainly is. One of the things I'm sure our viewers have heard about or read about from time to time is there's been a lot more emphasis on bioterrorism and law enforcement, public health, and I know that's an area that you've become more and more active in. Uh, what's happening in that area in our department? Mm -hmm. Fortunately with bioterrorism, nothing, which is really good news, but we are planning. Um, the money that's coming in uh, allowed us to become part of what we call a quad county effort. So we're working with Fond du Lac, Washington, and Ozaki County in terms of bioterrorism planning. Um, much of it has been tabletop exercises around different case scenarios that could come up. In addition, we've done um, one situation in Washington County at the fairgrounds where we've had staff um, participate with staff from those counties in terms of dealing uh, with an actual exercise. To me, the key has been when we plan for bioterrorism, it also allows us to plan for less um, drastic situations. So if we end up with some type of foodborne outbreak, many of the same things that mm -hmm. would occur during a bioterrorism type um, exercise would also occur if we actually had a foodborne poisoning outbreak. And when you say bioterrorism, some folks might be wondering, well, like what? what? Uh, your water supply. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want to say a lot because, of course, you often think, well, is somebody out there listening? And hopefully they aren't. Um, it could be where somebody would intentionally poison a food supply. Mm -hmm. um, so it has to do with more of the anthrax that occurred with the mail. Um, we had a couple of those calls last year, too, where somebody noticed an unusual substance and thought it might be anthrax. So it's more chemical in nature, okay. um, something that would attempt to impact. When you look at Japan a number of years ago with the gas that was put into the subway system. Okay. Now, you mentioned the flu earlier. and. I'm sure viewers have heard about the flu and, and how important it is to get your shot mm -hmm. and, and be on guard. Uh, what, other, what other types of public health activities have has the department been involved with? Okay, uh, A couple of things. The one that's probably near and dear to my heart is WINS, which is the Wisconsin um, tobacco um, project that goes on. And it's near and dear to my heart for two reasons. One is Wisconsin loses money if we don't cooperate with WINS for actual treatment um, in AODA, alcohol and other drug abuse services, so that impacts on community programs. This summer, uh, we had a, a group of high school students, some from Falls, uh, Plymouth, Sheboygan, and I think those were the three, maybe Elkhart Lake, participate in an educational sting operation of a variety of places throughout the county. And I did bring along, and I wanted to share with both you and Bill, and now I won't find it, the information um, from basically um, your two areas of the county mm. to see what happened. And you're from the Plymouth area, and out in Plymouth they conducted a, 30, a total of 31 checks, places where tobacco or alcohol would be sold. And out of those 31 checks, four places were willing to sell to minors. Um, so what happened then is actually the police officer that was with the student waiting out in the car or the adult from public health would then go in with the individual and explain you can't do this and it was more educational in nature. For those businesses that cooperated and didn't sell to minors, they were given a, a small token of uh, appreciation through the Wisconsin WINS program. So that was one of the major ones and we have the data for the, the different places in Sheboygan County um, where that has occurred. We also talked a little bit earlier about communicable disease and we're constantly monitoring that. Um, Dale Hippenstiel and the two supervisors always provide me with some regular updates on a weekly basis um, through Wisconsin in terms of what's occurring. We did see an increase in tuberculosis this last year um, and that requires extensive monitoring uh, at least during the active period, um, making sure that medication is being taken and um, all precautions um, are out there to protect people throughout the county. You're busy, very, yes, very they busy. Are. Uh, last year we talked about some new initiatives and in every budget process we like to see new initiatives and creative thinking although as our viewers know and certainly as we know there's been more and more pressure on government at all levels to do more with less. In mm -hmm. fact it's difficult to maintain at at present, and I know your department had some reductions that we'll, we may get into in a second here, but uh, you did have a new initiative last year, yeah. and that was a drop-in center. How is that, first, what is it, and how has okay. it worked? Our open-door drop-in center was in the planning for five years. 
um, and it is a drop-in center for people with mental illness um, who may not be employed but need a place that they can call their own. Um, we did find a location, we're renting um, some space, and it really showed cooperation between the community and a number of our divisions within the department. We applied for and received COP Links money, which is startup money that we could use to renovate the space and, and pay the rent. In addition, we worked using some of the Institute for Mental Disease relocation funds in terms of some funding to provide some ongoing support and some supervision to the program. And then lastly, we received some community donations, um, both from our staff internally, Omni, and a bunch of other um, organizations throughout the community. It has exceeded the staff expectations. It's just unbelievable. Uh, we were hoping for anywhere from 15 to 20 at any point in time when we were open. Um, they had a, a Halloween open house, and the last person to sign in was number 62. We're averaging over 32, 35 um, when we're open. And now the staff is struggling with how can we expand the hours. We're okay. open three afternoons a week and, and Saturday morning. Um, and it's just been um, a real good resource and consumer driven. Uh, the actual board um, has some staff on it, some vendors from the community, but consumers of the service that are actually directing that program. So we're very, very pleased. Um, and what's the benefit? The benefit is you see a decrease in institutionalization. You have a place where an individual can go. Um, there's activities, there's a pool table, there's foosball, uh, there's staff available to talk to, um, and it's a supportive nurturing environment in terms of um, not having to sit at a lunch counter or enter, uh, let's say, the Health and Human Services building where there might be more of a stigma associated with it. Now earlier, and, and we've got about seven minutes or so remaining, so we're okay. going to have to move along, but earlier you mentioned the Job Center and uh, one of the activities out there are services is W-2 mm -hmm. and folks may have read recently or heard that there's, there might be some change there and that how that's administered. Mm -hmm. Then again, not necessarily, but what's happening? What's happening with W-2? The state really supported consortium development and they wanted um, vendors, whether they be private or public sector vendors and um, contractors in W-2 to look at consortium. As part of our proposal process for 2004-2005, we have joined with Manitowoc County in terms of providing W-2 services to our customers. So nothing significant will change for people in Sheboygan or Manitowoc. Manitowoc will continue to staff their job center, will continue to staff the Sheboygan Job Center. But some of the savings will come in contracting with one provider for life skills and job training and development, and that vendor is ACS. In fact, ACS and some of our staff are up in Manitowoc today to begin some of the initial training and transition to that. We hope in the long run we'll see other consolidation and hopefully cost savings. But initially I don't think anybody will see that much of a change. Good. Well, the temperatures are dropping. In fact, as we're taping this program, there's a winter storm advisory in effect, and hopefully this evening we won't have too much trouble from our highway department standpoint, right. maintaining the roads and salting, and folks will get home safely. But every time this type of time of year, uh, there are some special activities mm -hmm. that your department is involved in. And I think above and beyond what perhaps some health and human services departments do. And why don't you touch a little bit on some of those special programs? Okay. I think the one right now that I'd like to talk the most about is Share the Spirit, which Division on Aging does in conjunction with the uh, Sheboygan Press. Um, and in fact, yesterday I was talking to one of our staff people and they said their unit the last few years, instead of doing a gift exchange, now all puts money in and they actually participate and contribute to Share the Spirit. Um, we have people who live in the community who are elderly or have a disability or even in nursing homes that have needs. It might be they want bathrobes and a slipper. They would like a new small stereo system. Um, they would like a certificate for a haircut or a, um, to get a perm. Um, just the needs vary and you'll see little descriptions in the paper. And individuals or groups can sign up and actually purchase the item or they can donate money so that item can be purchased. Our dress down day last week was for Share the Spirit so our staff contributed also to that cause. Um, last weekend I had the opportunity and a number of staff did to volunteer at Festival of Trees mm -hmm. and um, our Child Abuse Neglect Fund is a recipient. Um, so we are more than happy to participate in that and it's a wonderful event and we'll find out within the next couple of weeks um, how much we'll receive from that particular um, function. 
Internally, um, we have families with the economy the way it is and unemployment um, that aren't going to have a very um, happy Christmas. And um, we have community organizations and staff that bring in new toys, clothing, and food. And then our social workers, our public health staff, um, Pat Haferman and, and Chris Jeske, anybody in our department can come in and gather up a, a package of um, toys, food, clothing to take to our families. Um, so we are doing a dress down day this Friday for that particular cause. In addition, I did bring a couple things for you, Adam. Mm -hmm. This is the Sheboygan County Health and Human Services Department needs list, and I'll give that to you so you can post it in your office at the admin building. And it just shows some of the things throughout the course of the year, sippy cups, baby quilts, baby hats, gum, breath mints, bus tokens, alarm clocks, school supplies, but things that we can always use on an ongoing basis in terms of working with our clients during the course of the year. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to share with you the 2003 Sheboygan County Smoke-Free Dining Guide. And as we go out and work with our restaurants, one of the things we do is we encourage them to look at considering going smoke-free. And when they decide to do that, we publish the brochure and they get added in there. And this is also updated on the website at the county level. So I'll give you that. You and that's one that I didn't drop in the puddle as I was walking <laughs> yeah. in. We only have a minute, and I want to make sure we hit this point well. Uh, you mentioned some very important programs, especially this type of time of year. If any of our viewers are want to help, want to make a donation, who would they contact? How would they get involved? Well, they would contact Pat Priggy, who is our volunteer coordinator, and she can be reached by calling 459-6418, which is our fourth floor receptionist, because she will make sure Pat um, is notified. And I don't know Judy Linesey's phone number off the top of my head, but by calling that main number of 459-6400, Judy Linesey coordinates the Share the Spirit program. So 459-6400 mm -hmm. is a main line that folks can call. And then you mentioned one other line. Right, 459-6418. One eight, very good. Eight to five. Very good. Well, we certainly want to thank Ann for being our guest today and for you joining us this afternoon. And until next time, I hope you have a wonderful holiday, certainly a safe and wonderful holiday. Next month, our guest will be Joe DiCecco, the new district attorney for Sheboygan County, who's been doing some very, very important work. And it'll be his first time on the program, so he's going to be able to share with us some of his roles and responsibilities and some of the changes he's made in the district attorney's office. So until then, again, happy holidays and thank you for joining us.